What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Greek. Today I will show you a set that breaks a few records for sure, at least for me. This will be the largest, heaviest, longest LEGO set I've ever built, the 10294 Titanic. This is a massive, massive box here. Based on the information I found online, it is similar to the box of the UCS Millennium Falcon, but it's actually a few centimeters wider. The shipping weight was a whopping 14.2 kilograms, this thing is heavy. I'm not sure if you can visualize the dimensions, here is the tiny Technic Leaper excavator for scale. The box has the usual 18 plus design, with the elegant gold text and the background glow I think it works well. You can see the massive ship on the front, a close up on the side, and another view with some details on the back, and another view on the top. But let's open it finally. We've got way more tapes to cut than usual, and there are three boxes inside. It's actually not that easy to take these out, they are heavy even like this. The design is really cool, you can see some wireframe images on the boxes, the three of them together form the whole ship, then on the sides you can see the cross sections of each segment. As indicated in the top corner of the boxes, the ship is split into three main sections and each can be built individually. Now let's see the first box. Honestly I expected more content in it, it's only half full approximately. There are 22 numbered bags inside, 3 white tubes and a paper envelope with the manual. There's no sticker sheet, we get a plastic sheet with the flags similar to the sale of the Technic catamaran last year. The manual looks great, we get some information about the Titanic at the beginning, but that section is surprisingly short. Since this is only the first book of 3, I hope the others will have more details in them. So this is the first build of the 3 main sections and it is also split in 3 phases. Here are some additional details about the bow and the well deck that we will build now, let's start. After a few steps I see two things, the internals will be pretty colorful and we will see a lot of interesting connections while building all the different angled surfaces. And of course some fine examples of snot building, like this one here. Anyone want to build a reddish brown Porsche 911? Here's a key piece for it. I won't go into the very small details during the whole build as it would take forever, but it's interesting to see the basic concepts here and also to think about all the different pieces used, which one has a specific function and which one acts as a filler. The support for the longer bricks varies also between the standard bricks and jumper plates, but everything comes together nicely. The side paneling concept can be also seen here with the brackets and the slopes. I usually build Technic sets, so it's quite unusual to see so many pieces added in a single step, it really requires some pre-sorting to make sure nothing is missing. Isn't it pretty damn cool when crazy angles are built seemingly randomly and then everything just clicks in place perfectly? This is the build at the end of back 2, we have lots of things covered already. The 10 layer will be the deck and even those Technic pins will make sense soon. The first of the 284 black minifigure neck brackets used for the cabin windows. Here is a nice printed tile with the ship's name. I assume by the end of the build these neck brackets will be my least favorite pieces. Here's a little easter egg with the colors used on the side panels, the one on the port side uses red plates, the other on the starboard side uses green plates according to the standard navigational colors. Do you remember that angled piece with the brown Technic connector? Well, that one is the base of the forward mast and with these Technic and stat connections combined it is extremely sturdy and has the proper angle. Do you know what this black sausage and robot arm represent? The world's largest anchor ever forged by hand at that date, weighing 16 tons. And here are the two other smaller ones, with a pretty interesting support structure. It almost looks like it was meant to be operational, but I don't think that's the case actually. This is the end of section 1 with some fine details added to the deck, including the forward mast and the two flags. We already have a slight impression about the scale and the size of the Titanic, but this is really just the beginning of the journey. This is section 2 and we arrived to a point where I really wish the manual had more information about the things we are building. There is an intro at the beginning of the section where some highlights are listed, but going forward it would be really nice to have some reference, photos or more information about the details replicated with bricks. On this page we get to know that 175 firemen were working on the ship shoveling coal into the furnaces, so we can assume that these are four of the furnaces or boilers in boiler room number 5, with the fire at the bottom and I guess the blue bricks representing the steam. I found some great resources online with detailed drawings, I can't show you them here due to copyright restrictions but I put some links in my blog post 
worth to check if you want to know more about the Titanic. I understand that the brick representation will be schematic and limited by the material itself, like this staircase should not be here between the boilers, as this is the location of the huge boiler casing. But this is why it would be great to know more, what is a representation of the real features of the Titanic and what is just a structural necessity. These transparent bricks, for example, represent the pool, which was located on deck F next to the boiler casing in the middle. Not sure about this checkered pattern here, the room for the pool was quite narrow with only a row of small dressing cabins. On the other side we supposed to have the drying room for the laundry, these blue tiles might represent that. Anything else towards the pro is more like a structural build, at least I think it is. Yet another innovative way to connect those side panels. Not sure if you ever used this knot technique, but here you can practice it for sure. I won't blame you if you mess up this assembly for the first or even the second try, thankfully four needs to be made, and many many more later on. It's a nice knot sandwich, isn't it? Well, as it turns out, this is the bridge. Love all these crazy building techniques when random technic and system parts suddenly form something cool. I'm sure Mike Psiaki is responsible for a good part of this design. Some visible and soon to be hidden color coding. This single section alone has so many details and cool techniques. One to highlight, the shifted pinholes at the bottom of the funnel that will secure it at the proper angled position. Time to put the final little piece in place and then connect the first two sections. After the small details, here comes a completely different building style. It's interesting. I was expecting the red and green color coding on these panels as well, but we have green pieces on both sides. More consistency please folks. The panels beautifully snap in place and we are almost finished with box 1. There are a few missing pieces of the puzzle to put in place, like filling these gaps on the sides, then building the lifeboats and their support. Finally we have the two stands built, and believe me, the ship is sturdy enough to simply put it on the side and attach the stands. Box 1 is finished, and the build looks already amazing. Now let's open the second box. It seems to have slightly more content than the first one, but it's still not full. The box has 18 numbered bags, and the numbering simply continues from 13. The second book has some information about the luxurious interior of the Titanic, including the grand staircase that was one of the most distinctive attractions. A few words about the design process and some of the LEGO team members involved. As they say, the size of the set was not the main goal, but it grew organically as they added more and more details to it. Here are the two middle sections that we will build in this phase, so let's start. This is the first section, as you see it will be mostly hollow with only a frame structure, and the visible end is highly detailed. We have the coal bunkers at the bottom, the other side of the pool on deck F, then various cabins on different decks. The side panel is again a pretty repetitive job. So time to put it in place. The structure is pretty solid, but be careful. Uh, I mean it will be solid, yeah, it will be once everything is in place. There are some pretty repetitive builds towards the top, Kind of similar like the top of the first section, but even more. It might be a good idea to split the build between friends or family members, the three boxes can be built totally independently. We have a whole bunch of windows up here, which are actually doors in the build I think. This one on top is the skylight for the grand staircase. Too bad there's no staircase beneath, but that is a structural limitation, this is the correct place for it, but since these sections are not split here, we won't build something that we won't be able to see. And here is the completed section, with some very nice details again on the top, including the rails, benches and 4 of the 20 lifeboats. The other half of the middle of the ship is very similar, the rear end has other type of details and we have some cool space age slopes on the top. Time to join the two pieces together. After a few more pieces securing the connection, we only need to add the two legs. With the middle section finished, here comes a cool party trick. This weird lollipop assembly will be used to join the two sections together, pushing that long technic axle through all those holes. It requires a little bit of wiggling, but works like a charm at the end. And here is two thirds of the Titanic completed, we only have one section to finish. Now let's open the last box. It has similar amount of content like the second one, still not full. We have 26 bags numbered from 29 up to 46, that's more than the bags in the first two boxes. There's also one very long white tube and the third book. We have a single page about the accident itself 
and some information how the amount of lifeboats caused the tragic loss of two-thirds of the people on board and how regulations and safety standards changed afterwards. On the next page we see a cool comparison of the LEGO Statue of Liberty and the Titanic, both built at the same scale. This is the assembly plan of the last box and we can start with section 5. Although the instructions mention the electrical plant of the Titanic on this page, I think this is supposed to be the single Parsons turbine driving the third central propeller. Why? Well, electricity was generated by four steam-powered engines, two on each side, located behind the central turbines, so it simply does not match with this build. The whole section is pretty similar to the previous ones, there are no big surprises or very new techniques to highlight. Maybe except these ones, how to add pieces vertically when the surrounding is built horizontally, and how to hide the majority of that white slope if you only need the top third of it to represent the stairs. After finishing that section, here comes the last one, and finally we have some new stuff here. Here is this cool Technic build with the propellers and the shafts driving them, it fits in this studied build nicely. You can see all three shafts driving the propellers, although the central one is still missing. Ok, that's an interesting one. This Nexo shield has the initials DC, and it was used in the Haunted House set. It was a nod to Tiago Catarino, a fellow LEGO YouTuber who used to work at LEGO as a designer back those days when the Haunted House was designed, and helped the set's designer with a few tips. To thank him they placed his tombstone in the garden, what a lovely gesture. As the part appears here as well, it might mean two things. Either Tiago was also working on the Titanic before he left the company, or the designer simply repurposed the part since TC works well for the Titanic. I'm sure Tiago will let us know the solution in his review, can't wait to see that. Another cool build, the rudder with the third propeller. Originally this thing was 24 meters high and weighted over 100 tons, requiring dedicated engines to move it. It's not so stable yet, but with a few clever pieces it will be much better. The rear side of the body has way more tricks than the front section, you can find some really cool part usage and snot building techniques here. But the real magic is this moment, when all those crazy angled parts suddenly click together and they form this complex shape, truly amazing. Here is a printed piece with the ship's name for the stern, and it's actually an assembly built upside down and uses these towels as an attachment to the main build. Flooring is complete, but this section is still pretty colorful. Time to build the railing for the stern, and the mounting is a bit tricky, you don't see hands in LEGO manuals every day. You need to push the centerpiece in, then find the clips on the side and attach the wobbly structure to it. This one is weird. The manual says I need to use the tube from box 1. Well, this is the last tube from box 1, but this is clearly way too short. I have the proper tube, but that was in box 3. I guess the manual will need some correction. This time they got it right, the flags really came in box 1. After building and mounting 6 of these cranes, time to attach the two sections. Ok, so no special instructions in the manual, should be pretty similar to the previous sections, easy as pie, isn't it? Well, it isn't. I think this is a huge oversight from the team responsible for the instructions, as you need to be extremely lucky to make it work for the first try without knowing what's going on. So, what's the challenge? Well, as you see we have three axles there in the front section, and the three propellers at the rear. Those three axles need to attach to the shafts going to the propellers, but for that they need to be aligned properly. The axles are easily accessible, but it's a challenge to see the alignment of the shafts. I suggest to rotate the propellers and check if the connector pieces are properly aligned, then try to push the two sections together. There will be some resistance, so the connection is not even perfect without the pieces holding them together, but you can do this to double check the connection. The left and right propeller has a visible output in the engine room, if I rotate the propeller you should see those connectors rotating as well on both sides. If they don't rotate, your connection did not work, try again. The central propeller is connected to the turbine and you can't see in that one, so you can only hope that one worked as well. I really think this step will cause some headache for builders not familiar with Technic connections, hopefully customer service will be prepared to help them. This part hides the elevator gear and has two vents for the electric machinery and a few smaller items to fill the gaps. Here comes the rear mast and two ropes for the forest stays. The back stay goes to the rear, but there's again a small anomaly in the manual, you can't see where to attach that rope. Don't worry, it only comes a bit later, no need to attach it to anything yet. But make sure to pay attention to the alignment of the rope when you put that structure on top of it, it should come out towards the front. 
time to attach the legs, I'm a bit more careful this time. This is a huge surprise for the end and I love it. Although not sure everyone will have the same opinion, we are building functional engines. And not just some simple engines using the boring standard Technic pistons and cylinders. Everything is custom here. Longer pistons, barrels with cool snot attachment as cylinders, pure awesomeness. These four-cylinder triple expansion steam engines had a combined output of 30,000 horsepower. They were 90 meters long each and weighted 720 tons. The engines are ready, time to put them in place. Make sure to verify the connections by rotating the outer propellers manually. And now, the final assembly. It's a bit tricky to push the sections together, you might need to play a bit with the parts. There's a similar lollipop used to secure the connection like previously, a little movement might help to find the holes and push the piece in. All we have left is to add these ropes between the masts, and there's a little mechanism with that A-tooth gear to adjust the tension. The very last item to build is this nameplate, and we are really finished. I don't think you can really justify the size and scale of this model through the screen, it is incredibly massive, and looks absolutely fantastic with all the details. If you look at it from a certain distance, it does not seem to be brick built at all. Again, to show the scale, this is me, and this is the ship. Here are some common big LEGO sets for a scale comparison. This build really beats everything. About the numbers, it is 135 cm long, 16 cm wide, and 44 cm high. I don't think there's ever been a LEGO set that was longer than the Titanic, at least not with a single assembly. The structure is surprisingly sturdy, you can actually lift it up, although the statement in the press release that says large scale model which can easily be moved and displayed sounds like a little stretch. I will be very careful, don't want to start it over again. I can't really tell you the build time as it was not continuous and I was filming as well, I had some help for a few sections, but it took me 4 days to complete with a few hours spent with it each day. The amount of details visible on the outside is astonishing. It works very well as a display piece since you can spend tons of time just looking at it and observing every little detail. And there's even more if you remove the two lollipop pieces and the interior becomes visible. Here are all the details with the different decks I showed you during the build, the engines, looks really nice. As I mentioned previously I really miss more information about all the things visible here. There are a few clues in the manuals but a lot of things are missing. It's not that trivial to find information online about the interior of the Titanic, and I'm also sure some details here are not at the exact place they're supposed to be in the real ship, so it could have been really nice to find a way to share more about the design. I keep going back to this, but the augmented reality app for the Mercedes-Benz Zatros could have been perfect for this, to give more details and explanation about this build, both the interior and the exterior. Or maybe a podcast like the ones for the Technic supercars, with longer designer interviews, hopefully after the release of the set there will be a chance to know more. Based on the photos and plans available online, I can say that the build is pretty accurate, all iconic details are here. One thing I can spot is the missing vertical wire for the huge T antenna, this wire between the masts was used for communication. By the way, did you know that only the first three funnels were connected to the boilers and the force was not really required? It was used for ventilation and housed a lot of different pipes and tubes, but most of the smoke coming from it was from the first class smoking room. The Titanic only needed three funnels, but the builders thought it has to look impressive and symmetrical, so the fourth one was added as well. So what can I say? Honestly I'm not the biggest fan of huge LEGO constructions that are big just to be big. Yeah, I'm looking at you Cat D11. But this is very different here, the Titanic is huge, to be able to brick build the level of detail achieved here, it cannot be really smaller. The price is 630 euros or dollars, which is definitely a lot of money for a LEGO set. But this is probably the first time where I feel the 18 plus label is totally accurate. This is definitely not a playset because of the look, the size and most importantly the theme. There are a few functional details, but really not many, and they are more part of the interior features that you can observe. This set provides a building experience for several days, even weeks, and it should not be rushed. It can be built alone, but the three boxes give you the possibility to split the build with friends or family. You even get a brick separator in each of them, might be a symbol to encourage group building. Once the manual will be accessible online, even the subsections of a box can be built separately. About the manual, I really hope it will get some updates to give you more guidance to join the sections with the axles in section 3. 
The end result is a fantastic display piece, might be the crown jewel of any LEGO room. Or actually a perfect conversation starter for your living room, if your room is big enough for it. I don't think this set is a must have for everyone, but if you have the budget and enough room to display it properly, and you want a great building experience with tons of interesting techniques and an acceptable amount of repetition, then I really suggest to give it a try. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe and tap that notification bell if you don't want to miss my upcoming LEGO reviews and other LEGO RC videos. See you next time. Bye bye.